to this session today with Laura. Laura is um, a friend and a colleague of mine, so it makes it even more exciting to listen to her speak today. I, I would like to tell you a few things about her before I introduce you. Um, Laura received her Bachelor of Science in Exercise and Movement Science in 19, uh, 1998 from the University of Oregon. And she received her uh, specialist certification in cancer exercise from the Rocky Mountain Cancer Center. Laura founded her business, Empower, in 2005. And since then, she's been working with cancer survivors using exercises to help them recover from treatment, get stronger, and return to the activities they love to do. I, Laura is probably one of the most dedicated people um, to working with cancer survivors. She has a great sense of heart that she brings to her, wor her work. Um, so please join me in welcoming Laura Rosencrantz. I need a hug. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Well, welcome to Beating Cancer, one workout at a time. My name is Laura Rosencrantz, like Barb said. And uh, before I uh, introduce myself a little bit further, I would love to get to know each one of you just a little bit, a little bit more. Can I see just a show of hands? Who in here is an active treatment? Is it? Okay, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Who is through with treatment and now in survivorship? Awesome, congratulations, and thank you for being here, wow. Okay, and any caregivers and amazing medical professionals? You guys are amazing, thank you for being here. Okay, so it looks like we've got a really diverse group, which is wonderful. So given the individual journey that you're on, what is the first word that comes to your mind when you think of exercise? What does it mean to you? You guys can just shout it out. Sweaty. Sweaty. I love that. Empowerment. Empowerment. Love that. Stress relief. Yes. These are great. Any others? What's the first? Time. It does take time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Movement. Great one. Heart. Yes. Better mood. Better mood. Yes. Oh my God. You guys are great. Healthy, love that. Perfect, yes. So it's clear we all have very different associations with what exercise means to us. Today, I invite you to think about exercise and cancer differently. I'm not just going to show you what's possible, but I'm going to show you just exactly what's possible. So, like I said, my name is Laura. This is me about 20 years ago. Hard to believe time flies by pretty fast. Yeah. This is when I uh, started being a personal trainer. And I was training athletes. I was helping people recover from injuries, helping people lose weight. I absolutely loved what I was doing, um, loved my clientele. But after about 10 years, I just kind of felt like something was missing. At that same time, my grandpa, his name was Leonard, he was what everybody would associate with the perfect health. He exercised five days a week. He ate all organic, never smoked a day in his life. So he went in just for a routine gallbladder surgery, thought nothing of it. We were all shocked, and he was shocked, when he came out of that surgery with a stage four lung cancer diagnosis. That would be the first time that I would witness somebody that I loved or somebody, a friend, anyone, going through treatment. And what I witnessed was the debilitating side effects. Within just a few short weeks, my grandpa lost about 30 pounds, and he didn't have 30 pounds to lose, and was incredibly weak and basically just bedridden. My mom was the genius one who had the idea of, why don't you go over there with your exercise bands and, and work them out a little bit and get them strong? And when you have a loved one or friend who's ill, you feel so helpless. So for me to be able to have a chance to be able to help, I jumped at the chance. And I grabbed my exercise bands and went running over to my grandparents' house. And I knock on the door. I will never forget, my grandma opens it. I'm like, Grandma, I'm here with my exercise bands. I want to exercise Grandpa. And she looks at me and kind of cocks her head and smiles and says, not today, honey. He's doing what the doctors have told him to, rest. He's saving his energy. But maybe tomorrow if he's feeling better. But go upstairs, he would love to see you and go spend time with him. 
So that's what I did. I went upstairs, I took my exercise band, set it on the bed, and I had, it was a wonderful talk with my grandpa. The next day, he was not feeling better like we had hoped. There was actually an ambulance at his door taking him to the hospital. My grandpa never came out of the hospital. He passed two weeks later. Sorry. That was when my knowledge of being a trainer and my intuition of what I knew could be possible came together. I wanted to know, is it possible to exercise cancer patients? Is it safe? So that's when I set out on a new path eager to dig in. And I looked all over the country, and then I looked all over the world. And what I found was a really sad reality. Nobody was exercising cancer patients. And because nobody was exercising cancer patients, I couldn't find any data to support it or to not support it. And all I found was the same recommendation that my grandpa got. Rest, save your energy, avoid activity. So I decided to take things into my own hands. And I dove headfirst straight into the oncology community and learned everything I possibly could and gained the, the support of the local oncology community. I teamed up with an oncologist nurse that had over 40 years of experience, and I created Empower. During the next few years, I would work with over 100 cancer survivors one-on-one. -on -one. They ranged in all ages, from, 18, or from 21 to 83, all cancers, all stages. I worked with everyone. The one thing that they all had in common was that they were all undergoing treatment. And what I found was in just three months of gentle exercise two days a week, they, while undergoing chemotherapy and treatment, increased their strength by an average of 138%. Their fatigue decreased an average of 49%. And depression decreased 51%. What was amazing was to see how these statistics and these just numbers were actually showing up in their lives and how it was actually changing and transforming their lives. So I want to introduce you to Andy. And Andy was one of the first participants I had the privilege of working with. And when Andy came to me, she had just had a re-diagnosis of ovarian cancer. And because she had gone through the first time, she had had so many side effects and had such a difficult time going through the first time that her doctor had told her he thought she'd only be able to withstand four out of the 12 rounds that she needed for this next diagnosis, or next, the reoccurrence. So here's Andy's story. Empower has transformed my own life. Without Empower, it took two years following my first cancer treatment for me to recover and pick up the pieces of my life. Because this would be the second time I would undergo aggressive chemotherapy, my oncologist expected me to withstand only four to six treatments. The expected physical decline did not happen by the end of the sixth round. Instead, during the sixth round of chemo, I decorated 10 cakes for my friends and then went on to complete eight rounds of chemo. A difference that may result in my having many more fruitful years of life ahead of me. In three months of participating in this program, I increased my total body strength 64%. My cardiovascular endurance increased 188%. I lost two sizes, and my cholesterol level dropped 50 points. Because of Empower, I have changed my attitude towards myself and the disease that is likely at some point to end my life. Because of Empower, I have not only the strength, but also the confidence to pursue my dreams. So my goal for Andy was just to get her through as many treatments as possible. Andy's goal was slightly different. For whatever reason, she had this idea. She wanted to be able to get as strong as possible to be able to do push-ups on her toes. 
So this is Andy not only completing all 12 rounds of treatment, but had gained enough strength to be able to do push-ups on her toes to celebrate when she was done. Andy is just one of the thousands of cancer patients reaping the incredible benefits of exercise. The current statistics are showing now that when you exercise throughout treatment, you're actually improving your overall chemo completion rate, meaning you're more likely to stay on schedule with your treatment plan and finish on time. Which then leads to the next statistic, reduces your chance of mortality by 67%. Pain can decrease by an average of 28%. Your white blood cell count shows that it decreases an average of 15%, less infections. Hospital stays decrease in length of stay in half, and your reoccurrence rate drops in half. So let's unpack this idea of exercise. The Webster's definition is activity requiring physical effort carried out especially to sustain or improve health and fitness. My definition is movement is life. Movement is life. When you exercise, when you have cancer, you're exercising for a very different purpose. You're exercising to support your body. That old adage, no pain, no gain, does not apply. It's actually contraindicated. It's not about breaking the body down. The purpose is to support the body, okay? So to break that down even further, I'm gonna look at two different types of exercise, strength and cardio. What is the typical, why do we do cardio? You guys, again, you can just shout it out or, what? Heart, yes. Lung health, excellent. What was it, got heart, heart health, lung health? Blood flow, Blood flow yes. Feel good, yes. Weight loss, burn those calories. The purpose for cardio for cancer survivors is to flush toxins out of the system. You can drink water, it's a great way to flush toxins, but the best way is by moving. When you move, you're pumping your lymph system, which will help flush toxins. So that means your side effects, you're gonna have less severe side effects and less number of side effects. Your overall feel better in quality of life. You're also oxygenating the body. When you oxygenate the body, you're improving your red blood cell count. You're gonna give yourself, you got that one right? You're gonna give yourself energy. And you're also improving your own immune system. So you're better able to fight not only the cancer, but also any other ailments that you might have. Okay. Strength training. Why do we typically do strength training? Muscle tone. Yes. Yes. For the cancer survivors, the purpose of strength training is to maintain and regain as much strength and stamina as possible. Studies show that you can lose as much as a third of your total body mass in just two weeks of being inactive. A third. You add in the muscle wasting drugs like steroids, malnutrition, you might not be eating the correct foods, the, the best food choices for you, right? Your food, your taste buds change and appetite changes. And you also might not be able to absorb the nutrients that you should be. So all of these exacerbate that muscle loss. So what do I tell my clients and what do I recommend for you or somebody you know with cancer? I recommend 20 to 30 minutes of low to moderate exercise daily or most days of the week. Low to moderate is about 65% of your heart rate max. If you don't have a heart rate monitor, if you don't know how to take your heart rate, that's okay. You don't need to. Um, a simple breath test works as well. So what the breath test is is when you're exercising, you should be able to talk without gasping for breath. And if you're gasping, then just go ahead and take that intensity down a little bit. Okay. To break that down even further, what does this really mean to you? What I like to say is do what you can with what you have with where you're at. So we might have, you know, you might have a, have a side effect and have a bad day. It's okay. Do what you can for that day. If 20 to 30 minutes is completely unrealistic to even start with, that's okay. Start with where you're at. That might be one to five minutes, maybe in the morning of gentle walking, 
and one to five minutes again in the afternoon or at night. And every day, you just add one minute to those, those sections, right? Just do what you can when you can. Strength training, recommend two to three times per week. And what does this mean? Avoid exhaustion or going to failure. So if you, let's say we're doing bicep curls, and if you're gonna do 10 bicep curls, when you're done with your 10th one, you should still be able to do another three to five comfortably with good form. So if you can only do about one and you're struggling, maybe drop down that weight a little bit, okay? And this, uh, this, just, this idea of avoiding failure or exhaustion kind of encompasses exercise as a whole. Again, you are supporting your body, you're not breaking it down. So what happens is, is your body is already working so hard to heal from the cancer, heal from the treatments. When you exercise at a high intensity, you're breaking your muscles down, you're creating lactic acid in your body, and what happens is your body doesn't have the reserves to heal from that and to flush that out. So what, off, what typically happens is you'll hit a wall and you'll slide back and you'll hit a wall and slide back. So I want to introduce you to Alan, who is, uh, who is a a wonderful, amazing cyclist, and he had to learn this the hard way. Being an athlete, Alan, this is all he knew, was the no pain, no gain, right? You're fatigued and you push through it. And what he found was he would try and push through it and he'd hit the wall and slide back and hit the wall and slide back. And he ended up getting so frustrated, he went to his oncologist and said, how can I get back on my bike? His oncologist actually told him, Alan, I'm sorry, but this is your new reality and you're not gonna be able to get back on your bike. To Alan, who is a cyclist and this was his life, that was inconceivable to him. So he started asking around, looking wherever. That is how I found Alan. And he ended up having to learn a new way how to exercise, a way to support his body that gave him energy instead of depleting energy. So here is Alan. I've always loved cycling as a kid. I remember the first time all of a sudden I realized how you counter steer to stay up. Once you get the aha moment, you know, it never leaves you. I became quite overweight, very poor health in my, my 40s. But I thought, well, what would it be like to commute from Gresham to downtown, which is where I was? And the first couple times was, wow, pretty darn challenging. I thought I was gonna die, but slowly but surely, health kicked in and then I connected with some other people who said well have you ever tried a hundred mile event and I go, 100 mile wow you know that just sounds impossible and never looked back after that just remember riding one day and all of a sudden a huge pain in my back and I just literally sat up in my seat so we went to the doctor and he said oh it's probably just some gastrointestinal something or other and 2006 Cinco de Mayo, I was drinking a coffee and I get a call and I said, we found something on your pancreas. Pancreatic cancer, you know, it's so, you know, 4% survival rate. Well, they go, well, we found out what kind of tumor you have and it's extremely rare. And I said, yeah, yeah, bring it on. Is it a little bit more, a little bit less? And go, no, this one looks curable. When you have cancer, you're only in two camps treatable and curable. I figured I was barely treatable, and all of a sudden to make the leap into curable, but we're still gonna have to go through eight, eight rounds of chemo. I wouldn't wish that kind of chemo on anyone because it's not fatigue, it's just kind of like you're running out of gas, and I remember just being doing something and just, oh, I better sit down. So as I was going through chemo, I talked to the nurses, and I said, you know, I can't just be inactive. I've got to do something. And then finally one of the infusion nurses says, yeah, I, I think I can give you a contact. And it turned out to be Laura's program, the, the Empire program. She brought me in for an interview and boy, the first thing she said is, you know, we're going to have to slow you down. The types of chemo you have can really cause a lot of damage. One of my goals not only was to get on the bike, but, was, but to do my first racing event. So this was November, and by April, that I was actually able to do the time trial. Now, Laura was there as my cheerleader and everything. It was so great. I thought it was going to be about a minute 15, minute 12. I was able to do it for 
under a minute, which just, I was just ecstatic. I was very glad that uh, Laura was able to work with my doctor uh, and very prescriptively walk me through how to get back on the bike in a way that I wouldn't damage myself. Uh, when I met Laura, I was near the last part of my rounds. My blood count didn't, didn't crash or anything. Uh, they, they were able to complete all eight. I think I had a much better outlook on recovery. Hope is, is a very powerful thing, even though it's not always tangible. When you have it, um, it gives you a whole different level of energy to move forward with things. Okay, let's get moving. I've been talking a lot. Are you guys ready to put this into action? Learn some exercises? Yes. Okay, so um, this next part is my goal is to give you something tangible that you can take home and you can start today. Okay, so during the past 10 years, I've worked with over a thousand cancer patients and survivors. And these exercises that I'm gonna share with you today are some of the most gentle, effective, beneficial exercises that I have found, and so I'm super excited to be able to share them with you. So does everybody have a worksheet and a band? If not, a band? Okay. Okay. And for everybody that is remote, um, these bands, you can just grab them on Amazon. Um, and I, what I recommend is I always, even for, for anybody who's buying bands, I always recommend getting the lightest resistance. The, the bands, for whatever reason, when you get up to the, the heavy resistance, they just, they have no give, and they're really ineffective. So a little trick that I found is if you double the band, it actually will give you more resistance, um, but it's still pliable. So I would recommend the light. Um, the worksheets, they're just gonna be, for reference, you can take home. I'm gonna demo everything, and then we'll, we'll do them all today. Practice, okay? Are you ready? Okay. So um, because this is uh, the Susan G. Komen breast cancer, I decided to pull exercises that are specific for you. Um, the very first thing before we do strength training, I just want to do some range of motion uh, exercises. Typically when you have any trauma to your chest, you go into this protective position, right? It's only natural. So the very first thing I want to do is just open up your chest and start working those back muscles. So just simple shoulder rolls are wonderful to do throughout the day. And it's just bringing your shoulders all the way up to your ears, rolling them back, squeezing those shoulder blades together, dropping them down into your like seat pockets and bringing them forward. Just go ahead and do this about 10 to 15 times. And you might notice that one shoulder moves better than the other. One gets a little sticky. You might even hear clicking. It's OK. It's kind of like um, putting oil in a, in a squeaky wheel. So we're just lubing it up. Good, and you can do these throughout the day. And we're going up and back because I want to open up the chest. We're already here, so we don't need to go forwards. Okay, so it's just up and back. Wonderful, another um, range of motion exercise that's great for um, your shoulders. Arms are straight by your side, and you're just gonna do one arm over the top of the head, yep. And it's just nice and gentle. There's no um, pushing through pain. You just go to where it's nice and gentle and, and fluid. Yep, no jerking. Excellent, you guys look great. And again, about 10 to 15. Perfect, and also just make sure to breathe. I don't know, whenever I start, I just, I automatically stop breathing. So if you guys just make sure you take nice deep breaths. Excellent, you guys look great. Okay, so now for the strength exercises. So um, I, we're gonna go over three different body parts. Your legs, your chest, your back. So the largest body parts in the body, okay? I am gonna demonstrate three different levels. So like we saw at the very beginning, we're in all different places in our lives. So stay with whatever level that you're comfortable at 
And even if it's level one, just stay at level one and you can watch this demo two and three and you'll know how to progress. Okay? Okay. So, very first exercise is, again, when you have any trauma to your chest and you go into this protective position, your back muscles get lengthened and weak. So it's really important to strengthen those back muscles again so you can have good posture. So one exercise that is super gentle and extremely effective, you can do it seated or standing. I'll stand so you can, you can see me. When you're seated, you wanna sit up nice and tall on your sits bones and imagine like a little string is pulling you up. So you're nice and tall, chest lifted, eyes up. And you're gonna put your arms out in front of you, shoulders down, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna slide your hands Good, into your chest, and you're rolling those shoulders back, almost like you're sticking your chest out, like you're nice and proud. Good, and arms back forward. Deep breath in, and as you breathe out, pull back, roll those shoulders back, and also almost like you're touching your elbows behind your back, that'll help open up your chest. Good, so go ahead and try this about 10 to 15 times. Excellent, deep breath in, and as you breathe out, pull back. Excellent, you should be able to feel that those back muscles, even though you're not using any weight, they're working, right? Pretty cool. Excellent. Fantastic. You guys look great. Good. Okay. So you can stay here, or if you want to try level two, level two, we're going to now grab the bands um, and we're going to add some resistance. So what you do is again, you're sitting up nice and tall. Wrap the band around your foot. And you can put it out a little bit. Again, sitting up nice and tall, arms are straight, shoulder down, and you're just gonna pull your hand straight to your hip and back down, and straight to your hip and back down. Excellent, about 10 to 15 times. If you want a little bit more resistance, you can always choke down on the band a little bit and you'll have a little bit more resistance. When you're pulling, Think about, again, rolling that shoulder back and opening up. So it's not here, you're rolling back and squeezing those shoulder blades together. That looks wonderful. You guys look great. Keeping those shoulders down. Good, so about 10 to 15 on one side, and then you can try the other. And you might notice that one side is stronger than the other. That's totally normal. Good. Again, make sure you're breathing. Excellent. You guys look great. Okay, you ready for level three? So level three is adding a little bit more resistance. And what you're gonna do is now wrap the band around both feet. Again, sitting up nice and tall, chest lifted, eyes up. And you're gonna again pull both hands straight to your hips and back down. So you're gonna notice a huge change, huh? Yeah. All of a sudden it gets really tough. <laughs> Good. And again, if you wanna make this slightly easier, you can do just one foot and you'll notice it's a little bit easier instead of both feet. Yep, so again, the chest is lifted, abs nice and tight. Good. Good and, about, and good, and about 10 to 15. You can start with one set of 10 to 15 if you want, and then you can build up to two, or if two is, you can start at two, that's great too, okay? Okay, so next we're gonna work the chest. Very first exercise, again, no equipment needed. It's super gentle and really effective. Again, you're sitting up in your chair nice and tall. You can do it seated or standing. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna put your palms together, elbows out, all you're gonna do is just gonna press your hands together as hard as you can and hold for about three to five seconds and then relax and press again. And what I want you to think about too is dropping those shoulders down. So instead up, not up here, just think about dropping those shoulders down. Excellent, and push and hold, 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 hold. Good, and rest. And you can start with holding for three to five seconds and you can work your way up to 20, 30 seconds, whatever whatever you're comfortable with. Um, something fun too to do at home, if you have a ball, you can always do this with a ball and it'll add um, some stability, okay? Level two, we're gonna use the band 
and you go ahead and you wrap it around you. Perfect. Again, sitting up nice and tall, chest lifted. And what you're going to do is you're going to take one hand and you're going to push it straight out. And slow and control, coming back. Excellent. And push it straight out. And slow and control, coming back. Good. Keeping the shoulders down, chest lifted. And as you press forward, think about your shoulders. Have them stay exactly where they are. So a lot of times we'll want to push through. So instead, if you're staying up tall and all you're doing is straightening, straightening your arm. Good. Deep breath in. And as you press forward, you breathe out. Good. So about, again, about 10 to 15 on one side. And then you can try the other side. And again, you might def I definitely have a stronger side than my right side is stronger. So you might notice a stronger side. Good. So go ahead and try the other side. You guys look great. OK. Level three is the same thing, but you're going to add now. You're going to do both hands. So sitting up nice and tall, and again, straightening both hands. And again, you're going to notice a big difference of resistance. <laughs> Straighten. Good. And slow and controlled. Come back. Resist, resist, resist as it's coming back. Deep breath in. And as you breathe out, you push. Excellent. The shoulders stay down. You look great. Good. Again, about 10 to 15. <laughs> Looks great. It's perfect. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so again, you can start with one set of 10 to 15 and work up to two, or you can start with a two. Last one is working the legs. The first one is just an isometric contraction. So when you're sitting in your chair, you want to sit at the edge of your chair, up on your sits bones, nice and tall, feet hip width apart. And let's go ahead and start with uh, your left leg. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about if there is something underneath your foot. I don't know why. I think of a mouse. I think of that there's a little mouse. I, he's a sweet little mouse, but he's under my foot. And I am holding him down so he can't go anywhere. So what I want you to do is just press straight down and push, 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 and hold. Push as hard as you can into the ground, straight down. And you should be tightening your entire leg. Yep. And then go ahead and relax. And again, find that little mouse and push down, push, 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 push. Good. And hold, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze for about three to five seconds and relax. Good. So you can do this for about five to ten times on one side. And then you can try the other. And um, what I have found is a lot of times when I press, I'll want to lean forward and kind of like help my leg go down. So try and make sure that you stay up nice and tall, abdominals tight, and just press straight down through that leg. Tight, 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 tight. Good, and relax. So go ahead and try the other leg. And push, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Good, and release. Try a couple more times. Perfect. You know what, try and, does it help if you change your angle of your leg? So if you put your leg out a little bit further, press straight down through your heel. Another thing that will help is um, you want to avoid pressing down through your toe. When you press down through your toe, the pressure will go straight into your knees. If you press more with your heel, it'll be more into your hamstrings and your glutes, your quads. Does that help? OK. Level two is a modified squat. So what you're going to do, feet hip width apart, chest lifted, eyes up, arms are straight out. What you're going to do, again, I'm visual, I, so if I'm like a dog, I'm thinking about somebody pulling my tail. So if somebody's pulling my tail, I'm going to stick, stick my toes out, right? And then stand right back up. So if you guys want to try this one, if you're standing up, chest lifted, weight is in your heels, and just go ahead and reach like you're going to sit in your chair, but you're not quite. 
and then you stand right back up. Good, and reach back like you're gonna sit in your chair. Good, and stand right back up. And if you need balance, you can always be at home and hold on to not one of these chairs, a chair that this is not, this is like what not to do, um, a chair that is not gonna move or a countertop. And um, so one thing that I'm seeing some people do is go forwards. You wanna make sure that your knees never go over your toes. So that's why it's really important to reach those hips back and your weight is in your heels. Wonderful. Good, again, you can do about 10 to 15. And with this one also, you can work all the way up to 20 too. This one is a great one to work entire lower body. Good, good. Okay, so the next one, again, I would not ever recommend doing on a chair with wheels. So please be careful. This one is a full squat. And the same thing, the same position, but what you're gonna do is you're going to gently sit all the way down and stand all the way up. And what I want you to think about is it's not just clunking down and standing up. It's nice and controlled. So I think of an egg that is sitting on the chair and I'm just gonna gently touch it. I don't wanna squash it because it'll make a mess and slowly stand back up, okay? So you wanna try about 10 to 15. Stand nice back up. Perfect. Good. Good, yeah, so this is wonderful for your balance, for your entire strength, your core, everything. And these are so gentle. And you can, what's wonderful about these is you can fit these in to your day. It's just like, you know, it's that when you think about exercise and you think about, oh, I'll take the stairs instead of the elevator. Or I'll park a little bit further away to walk. These exercises, the same thing. You can do them while you're watching TV, while you're at an appointment waiting for an appointment. You can just fit them in. And like I said, they make an incredible difference. You do not need 50 pound dumbbells. It's really amazing. Awesome. You guys looked fantastic. So how do you feel? Who felt muscles they haven't felt for a while? Yes. <laughs> Who felt maybe muscles that they haven't, didn't even know they existed maybe? <laughs> okay, but most importantly, how many of you feel confident that this is actually doable? That is what I wanna see. Awesome, okay. So I wanna leave you with one last final thought and I wanna introduce you to Aiden. Aiden is a beautiful survivor that I just had the privilege of working with. She is in her early 30s, and she has an inoperable brain tumor. When I met Aiden, she had already undergone 14 rounds of treatment in the previous year and a half. She had been hit and hit and hit and hit. And I will never forget, I'm standing on the weight room floor, and she comes walking through the glass doors, and she is so weak and debilitated that she is using a cane and she is slowly walking towards me. She's 30. We sat and we started talking, and I was doing my intake, and I was trying to get to know her. One of the questions I asked her was, have you ever exercised before? She's looking at the ground, and she says, yeah, I used to be a runner, but that'll never happen again. As I kept talking to her, I was noticing she wouldn't look at me. She wouldn't take her eyes up off the ground. And it was at that moment that I knew I needed to do something to grab her and to give her hope. So I typically, I've never done this before, I just got the thought in my head and I just said, can I video you walking without the cane? I wanted to have her have some sort of reference that she could look back at. And I looked at her and I said, I promise you in three months, you will never see this cane again. That day I put her on a recumbent bike and just to get her body moving and just, just to get the blood pumping. And on the side, we worked on strength and balance. During the next three months, her strength, her stamina, her endurance, her balance all just kept increasing and increasing and improving, all while undergoing additional chemotherapy. So much so that after three months, I felt confident putting her on a treadmill. And I always had that thought in my mind that she'd always said she wanted, that she would never be able to run again. And I wanted to give her that gift of being, feeling normal one more time, even if it was for 30 seconds, 10 seconds. 
So I asked her if she wanted to get on the treadmill, and she said, okay. So we go over to the treadmill, she steps on, and we start it, and she starts walking, and she's kind of wobbly at the beginning, and, but she, her stride evens out. And once she got her bearing, got comfortable, I looked at her and I said, do you want to jog just for 10 seconds? So the rails are right here if you need them. She said, okay. So I bumped up the treadmill, and she starts running. And after 10 seconds, I bump it back down, and I'm like, how was it? And uh, she looks at me, and she goes, it's okay, but can I do it again? I went, yes. Bumped up the treadmill. After five minutes of running solid, I had to stop the treadmill and pull her off. So this is Ike. I am 32, and I have uh, stage three brain cancer, diagnosed when I was 30. Six weeks of radiation, chemo every day, and then 18 months of chemo after that. The cancer is incurable. I did not leave the house much, and I spent most of my time on the couch. My strength and livelihood had been taken away from me. I had to use a cane to walk. I'm feeling pretty hopeless. I haven't felt good most of the days of the past two years, but I make myself come here, and then sometimes I go home and I have energy, and I will clean the house a little bit. Now I can walk my dogs by myself without another person. I go to work now and I can go to the grocery store without a cane. I have a lot more stamina and strength than I did. Concerts is probably the, the way I spend most of my free time and money. It's, that's what brings me a lot of happiness. And for the past two years I've been sitting on the sidelines or sitting in the back because I couldn't stand up because I was too tired and weak, but on New Year's Eve I went to a concert and I stood up the whole time. Felt like a real person again. <laughs> we should exercise because it's given me energy and it helps my mood and it's completely turned things around for me. Before exercise, Aiden had completely lost her independence. She was dependent on a cane and was left isolated alone in her house, just sitting waiting to go from doctor appointment to doctor appointment. Her life had completely been robbed and stripped from her. She had no quality of life. In just three short months, all of a sudden she is hiking and sailing and making memories and living her life. I invite you to think about cancer and exercise differently. Do what you can with what you have, with where you're at. Remember, movement is life. Thank you very much. Um, one thing that if you love walking, one thing I'd recommend, how are your, um, your count, your blood counts? Okay. Okay. One thing that I would recommend that's super gentle for your body, you want to, as long as your blood counts are okay, um, being in the pool and walking in the pool is an amazing 
workout because you have the resistance of the water. So you're still able to do the walking and the balance and you don't have the pressure. Yes. Um, you just want to make sure that if your blood counts are down, you don't want to be around in a pool. You think about chlorine being healthy, but it's actually a total bacteria fest. So as long as your counts, still, I would, you're, it's still moist and it's still going to get, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how does that sound? Um, another one too is if you go to a gym, the recumbent bike or a bike is another excellent idea than a treadmill because it's going to take the pressure off your feet of the, the pounding and the, absolutely. And it's gentle and yep. Absolutely. Shoot, yeah. Absolutely. I would try that. And also, if you try also, do you have a gym membership? No, I, it, I would, but I live, I live like 40 minutes from town. So it's, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to get to do that. Okay. It's hard to make it through town. Yeah. Okay. Um, another thing, I'm trying to think of like simple things that don't take a lot of, um, a lot of money. Another thing that I found too is there are these, it's kind of, it sounds cheesy, but there are, they have, it, they're like peddlers and it's, they're like $20 and you can just set it in front of your chair. Yes. And they have different resistances. So it makes your chair like a recumbent bike. So that's something that's easy too. Absolutely. It's getting you moving. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like a bike, but without the bike. It's just the pedals. Is that it was for people with work? Yes. Yeah. Yes, kind of like the treadmills now that you have your desk and your. Yeah, and you can also just Google it on Amazon too. Oh, um, and I know they range from like $20 to $70. We were actually looking at, um, we wanted to put them in the chemo rooms and have people pedal while they were having chemo. So that was, we were researching them for, for chemo. Wouldn't it be cool if you could pedal your electricity? How cool, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Wouldn't it be cool to power electricity with that too? Generate electricity. Oh, call, call it restorator. restorator. Yes, that's not a name that I would have come to mind. <laughs> it's not natural. Not. Okay. Um, do you recommend exercise before, during, or after? Yes, yes, and yes. The stronger you are, the better you're going to handle treatment. When you're in treatment, you're going to have less side effects. And out of treatment, you're going to recover much quicker and also decrease your reoccurrence. Um, wait, before, I have to just acknowledge somebody that is incredibly special to me. This woman is the oncologist nurse who actually helped my grandpa. Her name is Rosemary McDermott. Because of that connection, she is the oncologist nurse with over the 40 years of experience that helped me start my program. And she is here today. She has supported me for this entire journey. And um, this woman has dedicated her entire life to cancer patients. She was an oncologist nurse for over 40 years. She just retired last year. And what does she do in retirement? She starts a nonprofit for cancer patients. So I just wanted to acknowledge before she leaves. Wait, will you give it to her? Hey, Rosemary, I wanted to give you these. I love you. Thank you for coming. Um, okay, do I research, do I do research on my clients, um, and have I ever been published somewhere? So that has been, that was a challenge for me. So I did my own research because there was nothing out there. 
So what I did when I first started was I took um, different tests that were, um, that were, I guess, acknowledged by the medical community. They were all solid tests. And I did assessments with them when I first met them and then three months in of working out. And that's how I did mine. Um, the problem that I had with publishing any research is because I am not a medical professional and I am not associated with a hospital or a medical university, nobody will recognize it. So um, that's where, that's just how this community works and I totally understand. But so no, it has not been published anywhere. Um, does, if what? I've had articles published, but the research that I, they had no. Um, anybody have any questions about that? Did I answer that? Good, okay. Um, said to myself, did I answer that? I love this. In January of 2016, I was told I had six to eight months. I said to myself, um, you want to get that, get the bucket list. I ran a marathon in June of 2017, and I'm still running strong. Congratulations. That is wonderful. How does your approach to exercise change from in-treatment to post-treatment? I was in better shape during treatment, and now I feel um, it's hard to get fit again. My approach during treatment is um, when you're going through treatment, each treatment affects the body differently. So my approach is I create programs specifically to each person dependent on their treatment plan. So like some chemos will affect your heart health. Some treatments will create neuropathy. So depending on the side effects of the, the different treatments you have, or if you've just had surgery, I will tailor it specifically to that. Um, out of treatment, it's, um, and also when you're in treatment, I change the, the exercise daily. So depending on if you're having a strong day or if you're having side effects. It's more of a day-to-day -day type approach. Um, when you're out of treatment, Typically, it's more of a linear, where I can just keep building and building and building and building. Um, to, do you mind who said this so I can be more specific and help you? No, yes? Yes, hi. Okay, how can, it, what, can you be more specific, specific so I can help you? Okay. Wow. Wow. Absolutely. It, yep. Definitely when something is, um, when your life is right in front of you, it makes, it puts everything into perspective, right? And then as that gets further and further away, it gets easier to. What I would recommend is um, changing your mindset. So when you were exercising through treatment, you were exercising for what purpose? that it would help you. Yep. 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 
So I would think about um, what is your next goal? So if, if your first goal is just to get through treatment, now that you're out of treatment, maybe it's to um, create the healthiest body or to prevent a reoccurrence. Or um, so just get a different, a new goal that's just as powerful. And also um, do something that's fun. Exercise doesn't have to be painful or something that you have to do. It can be something fun, like going in a on a walk and in nature and it's beautiful, right? Or, um, yes, yes, dogs are so wonderful. They look at you with those beautiful eyes going, please take me out. Yes, yes. Um, another thing that I like, I love just, um, I love like playing tennis or something because it's with a friend, right? So if you do something with a friend or with others so it's not just isolated and by yourself and um, I kind of think you want how about you want to do it in front of all of us <laughs> on the spot <laughs> That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Will you do me a favor? Check in with me. I want to see a photo. 10 years. I love it. Yes. No, I. Um, I know how to exercise around it, but as far as avoiding it, um, or, improving it? or improving, you know, I do, my belief, when you're exercising, you're improving your blood flow. And your, Barbie might be, a physical therapist might know this better, that when you increase your blood flow, that you're helping your body heal and getting those toxins out. So if your toxins aren't just sitting in your body, you're not gonna have such severe neuropathy, but also heal quickly. It's perfect. It's perfect. And for lymphedema too, doing light strengthening exercises with the sleeve will help pump the extra fluid out. So it'll actually improve your lymphedema. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to shorten the question that we raised and ask um, what are exercise classes mm -hmm. for all the schools? And um, like I don't even know what kind of schools. Seems so many. Yes. I love that.
That's wonderful. That's wonderful. No, and that's what happens when you do too much. So even if you do an, I, um, even if you want to do an exercise class, again, do what you can. You don't need to stay the entire time. You can just do 15 minutes and leave. You can do a couple minutes and take a break, and a couple minutes and take a break. One thing that I um, always recommend and that I love is th so it's recommended 20 to 30 minutes. What I recommend is I don't. I would prefer that people don't do the 20 to 30 minutes all at once. And I recommend that for several reasons. One is so many times you think, I'm too tired, I'm gonna do it later. You know what, I'm gonna do it later. And you end up never doing it. So that's one reason. The second reason is if you do the small chunks throughout the day, you're actually oxygenating your body and you're fleshing out your body throughout the entire day versus if you do 30 minutes in the morning and then you sit on the couch all day, right? So it's just a very different mindset of what exercise is and what it, it's gentle. It's just movement throughout the day. And it's something that you enjoy that gives you life, that makes you happy, that gives you energy. It's not going to the gym and getting on a treadmill and being a gerbil and making yourself stay five more minutes. Yeah, and then it becomes torture. And that's not good for your soul. That's not good for you. Yeah. So that's why I say do something that's fun that you enjoy. But if you're doing it for cardio, don't you have to get to a certain point where you get your heart rate up and sustain it up for a period of time for it to be effective or helpful? Okay, so again, whether you for um, you're exercising for a different purpose. You're not exercising to increase your VO2 max. If you were exercising to increase your VO2 max, you'd be Allen and you'd be cycling, right, and doing sprint intervals. Our purpose, and that builds lactic acid, and that's one more thing that your body has to flush out. What we're trying to do is give your body support and give it energy and get your blood going. So um, one example is I had another cyclist, and he was actually getting blood transfusions weekly. And... He wanted to go on a cycling weekend trip with the guys. And I, I mean, I typically, I'm so for my clients doing everything and anything. But when I heard that, I'm like, eek. And I was so against it. And he said, I promise, I promise, I'll wear my heart rate monitor. I'll watch my heart rate. I said, OK, OK. So he went. And what he did was he cycled for the first two or three miles with the group. And they all stayed with him. And they kept him at the heart rate monitor, or at the heart rate of 65% or lower, the low to moderate. And then he would go in the van, and he'd meet them all at the camp afterwards. When he came home from that trip, he never needed a single blood transfusion again. And it was low to moderate. So you are supporting your body, and by supporting your body, you're allowing it to continue to get stronger. If you exercise too high, you're just going to keep breaking it down. Is that, yeah, does that help? You'd be amazed. I had one, um, when I first started out, I had one woman who was on adriomycin, which is the cardiotoxic drug. And she came, I have everybody wear heart rate monitors. And she came and she started walking on the treadmill and her heart rate was 165 walking on the treadmill. Standing, her heart rate was 140. Your body is working, that's why you have such fatigue your body is working so hard just sitting, working through those drugs and keeping your body healthy and alive. So yeah, you would be surprised um, at your heart rate just, just at rest or just walking, um, just walking flat or just a slight incline that gets up. Yeah. Yes. No. I actually am no longer training clients. I stopped a couple months ago. Um, the problem is, is insurance does not recognize it. And so that was one of my problems. I've been doing it for 15 years, and I um, had to do a lot of fundraising to support myself. 
So I was actually um, extremely fortunate that um, the Middleman Jewish Community Center let me be there. And what they shared with me was they shared their nonprofit profit status with me. So I was able to fundraise and get money and they saved the money for me. And then they also donated the space. So I think that's probably why there aren't a lot of more cancer exercise trainers out there. Absolutely. Yeah, so Recommend going to see a physical therapist, definitely. Yeah, so if that's someone who you're not sure what's wrong, even if it's a basic, um, see a physical therapist that can help them with the pain. Absolutely. So Thanks. Any more questions? Yes. Um, I just want to clarify what you said. I have to look at it and see if you would know what you said in terms of who all participated, who got donated. And um, I'm sure you know how much work it was to try and keep them all from starving to death. But I'm just going to say the website is the Jewish Cancer Center. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And so there are two programs in there. And those are the Jewish Cancer Center that people Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. They are for you. Take them home.